Ну, It is July 14th, 2014, approximately 7.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. We are going on a journey, folks, across the country, destination, Neyland, California, Salvation Mountain. We currently sit in Marcellus, Michigan. It's a long drive. I am currently 34 years old. Um, well, I'm actually like two and a half. I got saved two and a half years ago. And uh, basically everything, I'm learning everything over again, doing everything for the first time with uh, Jesus, and it, it just seems to be really different. Everything's different, and it kind of, it feels like I'm doing everything for the first time. I remember uh, getting saved when I was 13 years old. Basically, accepting Jesus for who he said he was and making him your God, your Lord, the Lord of your life. Um, the Bible says to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and you'll be saved. Um, so that's what I did when I was 13. And, uh, and it was real. And I felt something. And I cried. I remember I was in my room by myself. I cried. It was a, it was a spiritual feeling. An emotional one. The whole thing, like with Jesus, it's, it's a heart condition, you know? It's all in here. And everybody wants to make it out here. But it's really just, like, inside, like... Why are you doing the things that you're doing? You know? You gotta do things for the right reasons. Like, I loved people my whole life, and I did nice things for people my whole life. But it was wasn't for the right reasons. I liked the way it made me feel. I thought it made me look like a nice guy. You know? Look like a guy who was good. You know? So I did nice things and said nice things. I wanted to look like a guy. It felt made me feel kind of normal. You know? It's just I looked around at the world, you know, and it's, I wanted to feel normal like everyone else looks. Everyone else looks normal. 
I wanted to feel like that, and I knew I didn't feel like that. So I just did what they did, and I did it a lot more. working against Jesus most of my life, to be honest with you. In the worst, the worst kind of way too. Cause I thought I had a relationship with him, but I was running around doing whatever I wanted, just drinking and drinking and uh, chasing women around. That's all I was doing, but at the same time I was, I would talk about the Lord every once in a while. Like I had this relationship with him. Um, because I got saved when I was 13 and I just thought that kind of still, app still applied or something. Something in my head told me I was still good and I had sort of a relationship with him. It was just more like, more like pen pals than anything. Um, I don't think I really met him until November 16th, 2011 when I got saved for the second, for the second time. One of five kids, um, I was a middle child. I am the middle child, still am. Um, I didn't change. Um, I have middle child syndrome. I was starving for attention because I never felt like I got enough. I wasn't cool enough to hang out with the older siblings and then the younger siblings came along and everybody loved the younger siblings. So the middle child thing, you're kind of starving for attention. My siblings are absolutely amazing. Um, they're all they're all beautiful, have big hearts. Um, and my little sister Whitney, man, she's a she's just got a big huge heart. That young lady, um, she's been a very positive influence in my life with my Lord. But around the same time, she I think she did a little bit for me. Um, but just having her, like we both were going through it together, just kind of reconfirmed like my faith. Like I wasn't this crazy person. It's like, why am I feeling these feelings? Why do I want to tell everyone about Jesus? Like it doesn't make sense. You know, we live in a world that says there is no God, and here I am, like face to face with Jesus. Like it was hard still is hard sometimes but having her there we go through the same thing and she's just so loving and so supporting like she just loves me she loves me for exactly who I am she always has and it's very powerful love love is so powerful man money doesn't make the world go around love makes the world go around it's beautiful how do you explain love? It, all you do is use different descriptive words that mean the same thing. I try to explain love and I just use different words that relate. And it's impossible to explain. Um, it's the same with God. You can't explain it. I can't. I, I can try and I can use you know, different clever words and stuff like that, but I can't explain it. I can't even understand it. I can't understand God. I can't understand love. I can't understand God. It just makes perfect sense that God is love because they're the two things in the world that are completely unexplainable. I need to use my brain less and like follow what's in here, man. The spirit, the spirit of God, the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead resides like right here. And uh, at first, you know, when I met the Lord, it was, it felt like there was my spirit and then there was 
the spirit of God there. Like they were both there, but they were like not really like together. And now, like the more I've gotten to know Jesus, and the more like I've come along, like it feels like they've just intertwined, like meshed together as like one spirit. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm not going to save anybody, no one in, the, in my entire life is going to get saved because of me. God saves people. I do not. pray for everyone who watches this film. I pray that you show them the truth. I pray that you place people in their life that speak the truth. But most of all, I pray that your will be done in their lives. And a special prayer for everyone out there who doesn't have anyone praying for them, Lord. Only you know who they are. And I just pray that you Show them your love. So we're going to kick off Colorado by a little story. Um, about truth. So four months ago I made the decision with the Lord like, hey, we're making this regardless. Even if I like fall flat on my face and start drinking again and going out and having sex and start smoking, like all that stuff. And if that happens, we're still making this movie and we're just gonna speak the truth. Um, because the point is that Jesus is alive. The point is, and that's not, that doesn't change because I fall on my face. So, story's still there. Jesus, my boy JC, kicking it. So I made the decision four months ago, and uh, things really started to change. Like, I really started getting close to the Lord. Like, and I just keep getting to these new levels with Him, and then things will happen, and I'll get to a new level with Him. And just, it keeps getting closer, and I think, like, how could I get any closer to the Lord? And then I do, and it's awesome. Like, for the first time in two and a half years, he took away nicotine. Like, he removed that addiction from me. And it was the craziest feeling. I remember the second that it happened, I burst out into laughter. I was sitting in my room. It was after church. And it was one of those church services where the Lord was speaking through my pastor. And he said, like, now is the time to... Now is the time to ask. Now, <laughs> now is the time for your requests to. So I prayed about the uh, smoking thing. Out of the blue, like within one second, like it was gone, and I burst out into laughter. And then I was crying, and then I was laughing, and then I was crying. Like he really took it away for the first time in two and a half years. Like he let me struggle with it for a long time. Um, and I was free from it. I got so excited that I shut my phone off because I have an iPhone and it's like a pornography machine in my pocket, basically. And that is my, one of my other struggles was pornography. Um, so I wanted to see what life was like living with Jesus and actually not having like active like sin in my life. So I shut it down. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't on. I wasn't watching pornography. And I was just like life got crazy awesome. It just got awesome. 
and I was so, I was just running around singing and dancing all day. Like I was completely free in Christ. Like that's a real thing and it's not easy to get there. You have to eliminate sin and that's hard. My brain, my mind and my soul are like at war. My mind keeps telling me that I have to have one. You know, my soul is just sitting there free as a bird, man. Just loving life. And if I just got to learn to live by the Spirit, you know, and not listen to your brain all the time. So it's an internal, whole thing's an internal struggle. But I recently, you know, creeping up on this movie, like, I had two or three, like, fantastic months. And then, like, basically the month prior, um, things started getting really hard. Um, and I failed a lot. And my big things, you know, and I started smoking again. Um, you know, not cigarettes, because that would mean I was a cigarette smoker. So I would pick up cigars and smoke those. You know, in my head, that makes more sense. I'm not, I'm not really a smoker, I just have a cigar, which is crap. But uh, I just promised to the Lord to tell the truth in this movie. And you get, you get in the church, and you know, people will say that, you know, that kind of ruins your testimony. But, and, and you know, they have a point, but also, like, that's real. That's real life. That's what happened. And, uh, I struggle with those things. Just because I have the Spirit of God living inside me doesn't mean I don't struggle. And I mean, you give your life to Christ, like, that's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. By far. I mean, that's not the popular message to preach. But, I mean, we press on, like, it doesn't, just because I fail, doesn't mean that Jesus isn't alive. Like, that's the point. But, I mean, I'm telling you about my life. Not for you to look at me and say, oh, that guy did this and that guy did that, or that guy believes this and that. Like, that's not really the point. Like, the point is to look to Jesus. He's the only thing that matters. He's the only thing that can like really truly give you peace.
high school I was a pretty popular kid, at least in my head. I was, uh, in my head, I was the most popular kid in high school for all four years of high school. Um, that was what's going on in my head at that point. And I didn't really want to date anybody because my heart hurt. Um, but I would go out and drink and, you know, hook up with women. I don't feel like I was, like, awfully depressed in high school. High school was fun. Like, I still had a good time. Um, the thing is, it's almost like from that day when I was 13, when I accepted Jesus, the farther along we go, the bigger, the more things hurt. And the bigger that hole got that I was trying to fill with everything, with women, with alcohol, you name it. Twinkies, pizza, cheese. I'm addicted to cheese. So in high school, I was still pretty good. You know, I was still it was still recent. You know that I had accepted Jesus, and I still read my Bible throughout high school. And my father was around, and he was um, a positive influence on me as far as um, belief in God. You know, I mean, I saw I saw him. He believed. 100%, regardless of what he told me or taught me about the Bible, which I don't think was a lot, to be honest with you. Um, but I saw that he believed. You know, at that age, like your father, like that's, that's a big deal. Now, the second that I graduated high school, me and a couple buddies of mine shot down to Alabama. He had, uh, one of my buddies had met a girl on spring break in Panama City. And, uh, Whatever, we were gonna move down there. He was gonna move down there. Because they were in love or whatever. And I didn't have anything going on. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go. So we went, lived down in Alabama. I don't even think I lived there for like the summer, I think. Um drank literally every day. The entire time. Um that's when when I moved from Marcellus, that's when things kind of started getting, like, noticeably, I was noticeably unhappy. You know, after high school, I bounced around a little bit. I lived in, I did another stint out in Alabama. I did a stint in East Lansing. Wound up, you know, back in Kalamazoo, which is right, you know, half hour from Marcellus. Um, and then from 2000 to 2007, I lived in Kalamazoo. All that time, after high school, like I tried to go to college, but I didn't want to get an education. That's why I wasn't, I wasn't going to school for an education. I was, uh, I was going to school because I wasn't stupid. All of the women were at school. All of them. They seem to all go to college. So, I decided to go for a little while, give it a whirl. Wound up going to uh, Kalamazoo Valley for four years. Probably four years. Didn't accomplish anything at all. Not even close to any type of degree. Um, I went there for a social club and to pick up women to meet people. And that I did. It worked. My plan was executed. It wasn't the best plan, but it was a plan that was executed. So I lived that, you know, sort of college life, I guess, for, man, it seemed like a long time. 2000 to 2007. So a good seven years of, uh, of that kind of party life. Yes, I 
woke up today I thought of you, my king I was angry with God most of my life. Um, even a year, <laughs> even a year or so after I got saved for the second time, I was mad at him. Like he had to like work some stuff to even show me that I was angry with him still. And it's so beautiful. Like God is so beautiful because there I am. He gives me the Spirit of God. He gives me His Spirit to live inside me. For a year, he's loving me and teaching me all these things and blessing me. And then a year, frick, man, a year later, then he like arranges some things to show me that I was mad at him. I was angry with him. And that whole time I was when he was just loving me. He didn't care. He was just loving me, man. So beautiful. I can't even. I can't even explain it. Explain it. Explain it. Not explain it. Right. So now, yeah, I can look back and see that. Like I met him when I was 13 years old. By the time I was 14, I was drinking, having sex, doing, you know, gambling, drugs.
talked about how like she was empty and stuff and she dug into school to hide that she thought that you know she could just get like good grades and good like do well in school like that she would uh, she would be like worth something you know so from the outside looking in this is just a girl going to college studying her butt off can't really see what's going on inside this girl's heart. She was, she was dying. She was dying. She was empty. <laughs> I don't know the feeling. From the outside, I don't think for the past for most of my life, you know, I don't think you could just see that I was dying inside. I couldn't barely see it. I just knew something it was awfully wrong. I 
live in it. It's like, oh, it's so frustrating. I found the like the holy grail, like the fountain of youth, the jewel of the Nile. Like I found it. I have it. It's right here. It's Jesus. And I just want to go tell everybody. And nobody believes me. <laughs> I'm just gonna shout it from the rooftops for the rest of my life. And you know what? It's your choice. You have a choice. You don't have to believe. You go on doing whatever you want to do. That's fine. I'm not gonna stop you. God's probably not gonna stop you. You can live however you want until you die. You can do that. But if you're looking for something different, something real, something that is life changing, that is world changing, man, I'm telling you, it's the craziest ride I've ever been on. Like accepting Jesus, like these last two years have just been crazy. I have, uh, I have laughed more than I ever have in my entire life in the past two years. Um, I've cried more than I ever have. Oh man, it's. I've had more fun and I've learned more about myself. And I've, most importantly, I've affected other people in a positive way more in these past two and a half years than I ever did in my first 30 years on the planet. And it's awesome. Man, I just, like I said, like I just want to tie everybody up and whip them and tell them, Jesus is alive. <laughs> I just want to do that until they believe me. The truth is, we all get upstairs, you know, on that judgment day that the Bible talks about, where everybody is there in front of the Lord. You know, I'm in this good line, hopefully. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to try to get into heaven. It sounds harder than the world thinks it is. But if I make it in the good line, and I know you, and you're in the bad line, going the other way, like you're going to look at me and say, why didn't you tie me down to a chair and whip me until I believed? That's exactly what you would say, I guarantee it. But, right now it's just not really socially acceptable for me to tie everyone up and start whipping them. As much as I would like to, especially a few of you. Stupid, y'all know the truth. Um, God wrote the new covenant on every person's heart and mind. Wrote it. It's there. In some form, somewhere deep down, everybody knows that God is the truth. Everyone I talk to says, oh, I feel uncomfortable in church. I feel judged. You know what? Let me tell you why you feel judged and uncomfortable in church. Um, God wrote the new covenant on every person's heart and mind. So you know the truth. So you walk in there, your sin, your sinful life is exposed. You are absolutely exposed like a sitting duck. Same thing happens when somebody says the word Jesus. You are exposed. Your sin is exposed. That's what makes you feel uncomfortable. That's why you don't want to go in church. That's why you don't want to hear the name Jesus. Because it exposes your sin like you, uh-oh, somebody said Jesus. I, I have all this crap in my life. Because you know the truth. You know it in here. Everybody knows it, man. I knew it, but we live in a world that says that there is no God. And even though I got saved when I was 13, like I was living in that world that says there's no God for a long time. And even though on some level, like I still believe and I would talk about it like I was a Christian or something. So weird that I just didn't see it. Like it's life changing. You have to give your life, or give your life to Jesus. Not Sundays for two hours. Your entire life. Give to Jesus. Start living out how the Bible says to live your life, and your everything about your life will change. Everything. Identify your sin and stop doing it, and everything will change. 
Um, you, I mean, y'all live in this world, and I don't. I don't live in this world, man. I live somewhere else. Like, I live with Jesus, like separate from this world. And it sounds so crazy. I get it. it sounds crazy. I sound like a lunatic. I promise you, I am not. It's crazy how much work the Lord can do on here in just two, two and a half years. I'm a completely different man. And it wasn't like that at first. <laughs> like, I got saved for the second time. November 16th, 2011. I will never forget this day. Um, I was running on the treadmill when it happened. Um, and I was praying. And I was listening to uh, 10th Avenue North, the CD that my little sister had. Christian CD. Um, and I just... I just started bawling. Just like a little child, man. Like a little kid that falls down, scrapes his knee, and like looks at you like the entire world has just exploded. Like that kind of cry. Like not the looking around to see if anybody's looking kind of cry. That just complete bawling. And at the same time, I was still running on the treadmill, and I was gasping for air, but I wasn't tired. It wasn't like because of the running. It was something completely different. It was a spiritual thing. I was gasping for air, and it felt like something was leaving my body as well. Like, I was like pushing something out and bringing something in. Um, and that went on for a while and I was just bawling, bawling. And you know, I didn't pray the salvation prayer. Um, salvation prayer is just words. Uh, now the Bible does say you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. But there's no set, <laughs> there's no set. But you have to say this specific word or you're not gonna get saved. People, people mess that up. I was praying to God. I was praying that he would use me. I had finally started seeking him. And I was praying that he would use me. And help me. And that's when it happened. Like, boom! Smack! Knocked me out, man. But even then, like, yeah, I got, <laughs> I got saved. But I didn't even realize it at the time. I didn't realize that's what happened. I got saved when I was 13. I was good. That whole time I was going to heaven. I had a relationship with the Lord. From 13 to 31. I was good. You know? All you got to do is say this little salvation prayer. And then live your life however you want to live it. And you're going to heaven. That's a load of crap. Um, just so you know. So anyone who says that. You tell them I said. I love them very much, but they are wrong. They should try reading the Bible. Um, that, like, salvation prayer, that initial, like, give your life to the Lord and, like, feel that presence, that is the very, very, very tip of the iceberg. If you just do that, then go on living however you want. Good luck, man. Good luck. I don't know. I don't know what would happen, but you're messing around with eternity, you know? It's a long time. Um, anyway, see, I can't tell you about my life. I just want to talk about Jesus. Two different times. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. Two separate occasions I slept with a prostitute. One was out in Las Vegas. One was out in uh, Cancun. Um, those, I could not even speak of those things that I did those things. Like that broke me, you know? Like that really just put a knife right in there. And I could barely speak of it for years. In fact, all this stuff, I couldn't even speak about until 2011 when I wrote my book. 
then it all just came, it all came like gushing out into the book. But that, when I was writing it, like that was the first time it had come out into the world. Like it was all just like internal and all this stuff just sucked it in. And I just like got to the point where it exploded out into this book. Um, it was so freeing the first time I even wrote it down before anyone read it. Like if you got junk, man, your problem is just to tell somebody about it, grab somebody, tell them about it. I just thought it was an afterlife thing. It's right now. It's now. You can have Jesus. You can have heaven right now. Like, it's so crazy, man. I've had the craziest two and a half years of my life. I don't know, man. I love everybody. I don't care. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're gay or straight. I love you. And so does Jesus. Jesus loves you. everybody would believe me when I say that. There was a gay couple, two young ladies that came to my church for a little while. Uh, and one of them totally got saved. Totally got saved. You could, you could physically see the difference in her after she had the Spirit of God on her. Like, I couldn't even, I couldn't believe it. Like, the physical difference in someone. They just light up, you know, for the first time. Um, she's just, she's beautiful. And I don't know, I guess she was beautiful before she got saved, but I didn't notice as much. Like, she was really, truly beautiful after. And um, I might have a little crush on her. But I, I probably don't have a crush on her. I get confused <laughs> because I love everybody. Like, I love everybody. So I can't tell what's more than that or less than that you know it's crazy anyway now my whole church is going to know I have a crush on her so that's cool um, whatever I'm going to spend my life with whatever woman God has chosen for me not who I like or think is cute or like hanging around with it doesn't matter I make really bad decisions. I want God to make this one. I say, 
I love Jesus. Love is such a hard word to explain. Someone can use that same word for about a t-shirt or a Twinkie. You know, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. I am absolutely head over heels in love with Jesus. I have fallen in love with him. in uh, just reading November and December 
just like I couldn't stop writing like I wrote like half the book in those two months. Um, and it's just some of that book is beautiful. It really is. Just a man, uh, you know, trying to find happy. And I wasn't looking for like I wasn't looking for religion. Religion is silly. I wasn't looking for religion. I wasn't looking for this thing that kind of resonated with me and oh I like part of that religion and part of this I'm gonna put those together and make my own because that sounds nice I wasn't looking for that I was looking for the truth is what I was looking for I was looking for one truth I knew there wasn't a bunch of different truths I was looking for the one that's what I found man and it took me a long time to get there folks. Long time. Hard, hard road I took. I took a path that was not easy. Um, I got saved November 16th on that treadmill. Spirit of God smacked me. Um, remember I said it took my brain a little while to catch up. Two weeks later, I was still going out to the bar. I was still having a good time. It was, it was, things were different. I wasn't really seeking as much any like answers, but I was still going out and getting drunk. That's what I'd done forever, so I was going to continue to do that. Um, two weeks after I got saved, went out to the bar, picked up a young lady, took her home, had sex with her. Two weeks. What a loser, man. What a loser. Um, but it just shows, shows the grace of God, man. He knew I was going to do that. He knew I was going to do that. His love is just so powerful. And it's never ending. It's just forgiveness after forgiveness. And it's so beautiful, I can't even handle it. I start talking really about it, I just get over emotional. But man, you know, you get, you start to think that Jesus is just, uh, you know, like going to churches and the whole religion thing is just like boring and like going to church and singing hymns and I can't do anything fun. You know, I can't go out and do any of this fun stuff. Like the whole world that looks at it as like boring. It has been more exciting. I've had more excitement in my life in the last two and a half years than the first 31 put together. By leaps and bounds. I've laughed more. I've cried more. It's been the craziest two and a half years of my life. Like I'm in touch with my creator. Like God created me and he has like a purpose for me. And I'm in touch with that. And it's crazy. Like I said, it's like the, I found the freaking jewel of the Nile, man. Ugh. And it's crazy. And it's so good. And it's just like giving. Like, I just want to give everybody something. I want to give away all my money. I don't care. I don't want it. It's stupid. I hate money. I just want to show people love. I just want to love people. And not because the Bible says to. That's what it was at first. At first, I was like, okay, I need to love everybody. So I look at people like, uh, him? I can't love him. But then eventually, like, the more you get to know Jesus, like, you start to love everybody. You don't just say you love them, but you start to actually love them. And it's crazy. It's crazy. I love people I don't even know. I love stranger. I love this George kid that I met at a couple rest stops. A rest stop a couple days ago. George from Indiana. He was driving out to LA. I love him. I told him Jesus was alive. And I was making a movie about it. He thought that was cool. I don't think he understood. He was foreign. But I love him. I love him. I love everybody, man. Everybody's so beautiful. Everybody. I don't care what you look like anymore. And I'm a person that got caught up in physical, physical a lot. Like, being attracted to someone. Like that was, I wanted 
to talk to attractive people more than I did unattractive people. And I live my life like that, which is weird. But not anymore, man. I love everybody. And this is funny because this was my actual thought process is, well, if I'm going to love everybody, then I need to just kind of eliminate a lot of people from my life and I need to kind of sit in my room. And that way, if I just see Whitney and my mom, yes, you know, I love everybody. I love them. I did it. I love everybody. I said it in scripture. I did it. So I was going to quit my job. There was no way I could work in retail and love everybody. That's crazy. Um, but man, that job has been the biggest blessing in my life. I've grown more in the spirit of God through that job than anything else, man. I've learned to love people regardless of what they say to me or if they hate me or if they're yelling at me. I've learned to just love them. And now it's almost a challenge. Someone comes in like angry and upset and you can tell like people, you know, they're mad. They're taking out their anger on me. They're not really mad at me. Like they've had a hard life. They've had things go wrong, you know? Especially if they don't know Jesus, they have that empty place that they need to put, that they put in something because they don't have Jesus in there. And they take it out on me, so now I just get to love them. So then, uh, you know, there we are. You know, it's 2012, I get baptized. Really, like, set, like that weight of the world that I'd been, like, carrying around. Like, some of it was kind of lifted when I got saved, but I got so caught up in women right after that. There were so many things going on right after that, trying to finish my book, or after that, that I kind of, everything got twisted up, messed up. But then when I got baptized, it's just like, the weight of the world that I've been carrying around since forever, like, Jesus reached down and he, <laughs> And he's carrying, he's carrying it for me. That's <laughs> so awesome. I can finally, I can finally breathe. I can stand up like my body felt lighter. I can jump it. I can jump out of bed for the first time in my life. I can jump out of bed in the morning. I just, and you know, looking back, like I lived most of my life, like I was barely. Breathing. I couldn't breathe, but I, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't realize that's what it was. Just, for some reason, like, the world's blind to it, like, you can't see it. And God, God chooses the bums and the losers, too. <laughs> Just spread the word, man. <laughs> God chooses the poor and the weak and the bum and the losers to spread his word. It's so beautiful. So man can't boast. Like you can't brag. You can't be like super strong and super intelligent and rich and get anything from God from that. For that. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It's useless. All it does is bring you, bring you know, get all prideful and think you're awesome and just pushes you farther away from any opportunity where you can meet the Lord. I'm so thankful I fell flat on my face in this life. You receive me just as I am. You welcome you pardon, relieving you. to hold me, you 
night before I got saved, I had convinced myself that pornography was good, it was a good thing for me. I did that, and then I, it kept me from going out and like doing the real thing. And I really like believed that, that it was good, it was a good thing. Uh, pornography is one of the deepest, darkest things that you can do. If you're doing it, stop. Um, it's obviously not that easy. I get it. I haven't had sex in two and a half years. My brain tells me that my body is going to blow up and explode and I'm going to die if I do not do this. My brain tells me that daily. Um, but the thing about pornography is you watch it enough then like regular sex isn't enough anymore to watch. So you start looking at different things. And, you know, it just gets so twisted up. And you start thinking that these dirty, disgusting things actually, like, turn you on. And then you start to live in that. And live in that. You give way, you give place to that in your life. And you start to think like that's who you are. Like this is who I am, I'm attracted to this. This gross, disgusting, perverted, perversion of sex. I'm attracted to this and that becomes who you are. That turns into you walking around thinking this is who I am on the inside, nobody can love me. God hates me, nobody loves me. I'm attracted to this, this gross thing that I even hate watching but I have to at the same time. Um, and it's just so dark and internal. And it's so easy to hide. You can hide it your entire life. You have to get help if, if you're hooked on it. You have to. It's, it, it, ruins, it ruins me more than anything when I'm doing that. I'd rather go out and get drunk and take a woman home and smoke a pack of cigarettes and sit home by myself in secret and watch these movies. <laughs> the stupid nicotine. Oh, it's so dumb. It makes me so mad. Oh, I've quit so many times, I can't even tell you. I've been in a place where I was changing my coat before I went to church because I didn't want to smell like smoke. Try to be a smoker in the winter and hide that. You can't. For some reason, smoke stays on you in the winter. Like you just reek of it. You won't understand it, but it's true. So I'm taking showers before I go to church. Like all this crap, it's just crap is what it is. But these addictions that I've had that I haven't been able to let go of for the last two and a half years, they straight up have turned into, like I can see it now, that they are like the biggest blessing <laughs> that's hard to talk about they're like the biggest blessing <laughs> in my life like we all we all get confused on what blessings are from God like we think it's a new house is a blessing a new car a new job is a blessing you know what a blessing from God is something that makes you seek him more something that makes you weak and cry out to Jesus that's what a blessing from God is that's what he sees as a blessing Aha. not a new house not a new job not more money not the lottery if you're playing to win if you're praying to win the lottery stop I just got off on an exit. On an exit. Man, what am I talking about? Jesus again. These two things that I just struggle with have made me, forced me into seeking, forced me into seeking the Lord's help every single day for the past two and a half years. If, we, if you would have just removed all those addictions like right away, like boom, I got saved, I didn't, I was good. You know what I would have done? 
that have been good. Like, okay, Jesus, we're cool. It was nice meeting you. I'm gonna go do this now. But he loves me too much for that. Everybody I know has a story of why they don't go to church anymore. Somebody did something. Um, the problem with church is it's like men run it. <laughs> like human beings run it. It's the problem human beings make mistakes. So you need to put your trust in Jesus and not your pastor. We're not in this church. You know? Put your trust in Jesus and you're good. You're not going to get offended when this church does something that, you know, ruined your life and you're never going to church again. It doesn't change the fact that Jesus is alive. When you stop going to church because someone at the church offended you, what does that have to do with anything? Does that mean there is no God? No. <laughs> it means that guy is an idiot. I love him, whoever it was, hypothetically. But why would you stop going to church because someone in the church offended you? It makes zero sense. Zip. I don't get it. I don't get it. That doesn't mean Jesus isn't alive. I just want to shake him. It's like, go back to church. It doesn't mean Jesus isn't alive, man. Oh, people, stop making sense to me. I don't get it. I don't understand why anyone does anything or says anything. It doesn't make sense. I'm living on a different planet. Not on this planet. Like, originally I thought, I'm on this planet, I'm just kind of in a different world with Christ. I might be on a different planet with Christ. Maybe a completely different planet. You guys, I don't know about you. But I know better. I, I fall into the same stupid garbage as everybody. So, I'm not judging you. I love you. We're all idiots. I'm just an idiot that loves Jesus. I'm gonna tell the world about it. It's the only difference. I think the world's point of view on Christianity, religion, is that it's boring. <laughs> My God, the God I serve is absolutely the farthest thing away from boring that I've ever seen. You know what? Like this God created human beings from nothing. He created this world from nothing. God created sex. Sex. I am a Christian and I'm not scared to talk about sex. Um, it's a thing that God created that's beautiful. And you know, when used in the right way, um, the devil's done a good job of perverting that over the years. Um, but man, sex is beautiful. That's such a beautiful thing, you get so close to somebody through that. Um, the Bible talks about becoming one um, in marriage and that. Personally, I think I forgot what sex is like. I do not remember. It was two and a half years ago. But, I've been born again, like, spiritually, and now when I do get married, um, it will have been, it will be like, you know, like having sex for the first time, which is gonna be beautiful. I got a cowboy hat thing. It was $3.99. I feel very good about that purchase. <laughs> Maybe the best $3.99 I've ever spent. I just, like, my encounter with Jesus, it drastically changed my life. And I needed other people out there. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of hurting people that need Jesus. I mean, if you're doing okay and your life is great and you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you. God's not going to stop you. You can go on living however you want to live. Um, I just 
love Jesus, man. And I want to tell the world that there's a better way. We live in a jacked up world. This world is weird. We live in a world where parents molest their children, their own children. We live in a world where rape is a thing. That's an actual thing that happens. I can't imagine what that would be like, Kevin. Being a woman and have someone take that from you. Um, we live in a world where there's prostitution and strip clubs, the pornography business, they're striving. And I was part of that problem. I indulged in all of it. Spent a lot of money on strip clubs in my day. Those poor girls, man. I don't know why. I don't know why I couldn't see it. It doesn't make sense. I was better. I was better than that. Just got caught up. Just got caught up in everything. You know, you get in that sin, and it just it start. It owns you, and that's what you do when you worship that sin and you live in that sin and that's what happens but it just it leads to empty man and it's fun for a season you can go out and have fun drinking and partying for a little while but it's an empty road I went down it I went down it for a long long time and it got nothing it got emptier and emptier You know, this whole time since I've been saved, you know, you get just down on yourself and think you're not good enough. You know, like, God doesn't love me. I'm not good enough for this. This is way beyond me. You're right. You're not good enough. You're not good enough for Jesus. You're not good enough for heaven. You're not. You don't deserve it. It's a gift from God. It's a gift. And I'm going to accept that gift and be extremely thankful about it. And I'm going to tell the world about it. I'm going to accept that gift from the Lord. I'm grabbing it. Grabbing it. And it's mine. It's mine. I'm not letting go of it. Praise the Lord. So I am a Christian for the original intent of the term. Christ-like. That's my goal. To be Christ-like. I want someone to mistake me for Jesus. That's what I want. Um, then, of course, I'll tell them I'm not. You know, I was about a year, year and a half in, and um, still struggling with my addictions and stuff. And just praying for a year, you know, like, Lord, show me what you have for me. Show me what you have for me. I want to live for you, you know. Just... But I still pray. And uh, I went down to lay down in bed one night. And I just hear this voice. Are you ready for me to show you? This is what he said. He didn't say, hey, Chadwick, this is uh, JC. Here's what I need you to do. He just spoke plain as day. Like, he's been there listening to my conversation, listening to my prayers for a year. I spent a month wondering if that actually happened. Then I fell on my face. Um, I actually started smoking cigarettes again and like, got consumed in pornography again. Um, like, really, like, every single step of the way. Like every time I've really heard from God and every like thing I've done, like I've fallen flat on my face. And he just picks me up and we start going again. Um, I get off track, things get all twisted up inside and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And uh, I get sort of lost and I fall down. And he just picks me up and we start over. And I just, it's just a constant theme. And, uh, you know, eventually, I'm not going to fall down so much. But his love's just beautiful. It's beautiful. 
guess the point of the whole thing is God is. God is. Jesus is very much alive and doing well. And the Bible is the written word of God. It's a love story written from God, by God, to every human being to ever walk the planet. The big thing for me is I can look, I can look at all of you right now, and I can, uh, I can tell y'all that I am beautiful. That's something I was never able to do my entire life. I am beautiful. I can see why God created me. And I can see the beauty in it. It's just something that escaped me forever. I couldn't I couldn't see it. But today, today I can. And I hope, and I pray, that you can see it. Not in me, but in yourself. The devil's been lying to everybody. He's been lying to you their whole life. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. It's all lies. God created you just the way you are. And it's beautiful. And everybody is beautiful. And that's... And that in itself is beautiful.
Well, we are at Salvation Mountain. Slept in my car last night. And it's really, it's really hot in the desert. That's just a crazy trip. Flew by. It was the easiest thing I've ever done. I didn't get tired once. I wasn't at the wheel and I had to pull over because I was tired. So cool, man. Just doing something for the Lord. Crazy guy lived down in the desert for 25 years. Just praising the Lord. Makes you look at your life a little bit. What are you doing for the Lord? I drove through here the other day, yesterday, and it was 114 degrees outside. This man lived out here in his truck for 20 years. Building a monument for God. makes you question things. How much are you doing for God? It's beautiful. It's uh, a little bit more amazing than I thought it would be. And God was showing off the whole time with the sun rising right behind it. It's a total, it's a total show off, man. <laughs> um, now it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see somebody Worship God like he should be worshipped. Obviously this man had an uh, encounter with Jesus that changed him. The world looks at him as just a crazy old man. But I know what happened. God spoke to him.
sing along Hallelujah is what I'm singing Hallelujah is what I'm singing My Savior lives inside of me Sing along and hallelujah is what I'm singing. Sing along Hallelujah Is what I'm singing That's a wrap. That's a cut. Um, crew, crew, clean it up. We're done. We're good. Um, I need a, I need some water or a coffee or something. Bring me, bring me some water and some ice and some fresh flowers. <laughs> That's a wrap. Love you guys. Um, did I mention? I don't know if I mentioned it, but I love Jesus a lot. So. There it is. The beans have been spilled. I'm gonna go be a cowboy. I'm not gonna go home. I have to I just realized I have to drive all the way back to Michigan. That's crazy, crazy far away. What was I what was I thinking? Could have done this movie in my room. <laughs>